Welcome everyone to oh, take this off. <laughs> Welcome everyone to our Monday Thursday service. It's always wonderful to celebrate these special days. This is one of the very special days that we have throughout the year, and especially as Christians, as we think about what happened on this incredible day about 2,000 years ago. If you haven't done so already, done so already, please sure to pick up a communion set. We will be having and celebrating the Lord's Supper a little later in our service this evening. First, I'd like to thank Pastor Hilda and Pastor Nona to uh, tag team here. We're going to be doing a little tag teaming back and forth for the service. Uh, it is a time of celebration, but it's also a time of reflection on this evening. You may wonder why this day is called Maundy Thursday. It's not Monday, Thursday. That would be too confusing. It's Maundy Thursday. The day before Good Friday is always called Maundy Thursday. It's so called from the Latin Dies Mandati, literally the mandate. This tells us of Christ's great mandate that when we read in John 13, we have, that day after Jesus had washed his disciples' feet, he said, I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. Will you please stand as you are able and join me in this evening's responsive reading. On this day, Christ, the Lamb of God, gave himself into the hands of those who would slay him. On this day, Christ gathered his disciples in the upper room. On this day, Christ took a towel and washed the disciples' feet, giving us an example that we should do to others as he has done to us. On this day, Christ, our God, gave us his holy feast, that we be Let us pray. We love you, Lord. You hear us. You listen to our prayers. You have always heard us whenever we've called to you. Though death tries to bind us and the gates of hell open before us, we will call on the Lord's name for deliverance. You are full of grace and righteousness. You are full of compassion. You have saved us and preserved us, and we rest in your love and care. How can we repay you, Lord, for the gifts you showered upon us? We offer our thanksgiving to you, Lord. Guide us. Be with us as we worship you, especially on this special day, Monday Thursday. Amen. Amen. Let us now hum as we are able to. And the words are going to be up on the screens. The wonderful song written by David Meese, We Are the Reason. word, let us pray. 
Holy God, source of all love, on the night of his betrayal, Jesus gave his disciples a new commandment, to love one another as he loved them. Write this commandment in our hearts. Give us the will to serve others as he was the servant of all, who gave his life and died for us, yet is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. O Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us this night. Then, may we respond with faithful and obedient lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now listen to the anthem that is presented to us by Craig and Bethany, Sell When I Survey the Wondrous Cross.
The Old Testament reading is from the book of Psalms, chapter 31, verses 1 through 5. Hear now the word of the Lord. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily. Be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord faithful God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The gospel reading for this evening is from Luke's gospel, the 22nd chapter, verses 7 through 20. Then came the day of unleavened bread, on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John, saying, Go and prepare the Passover meal for us, that we may eat it. They asked him, Where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, When you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters, and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks you, Where is the guest room? where I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, already finished. Make preparations for us there. So they went and found everything he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour came, he took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the words of our Lord endure forever. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this, these words of comfort, words of encouragement, but sometimes with a heavy heart, we read them as well. We ask your Lord to be with us. If there's anything that hinders us from hearing what you have for us, Lord, we ask you to take it. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Today is Monday Thursday. It is also April Fool's Day. <laughs> Monday Thursday hasn't fallen on April Fool's Day since 2010, and it won't happen for many, many years from now. Most of us have played April Fool's jokes on others, or have had jokes played on us. One of my favorite ones, actually when the kids were younger, it was really stupid. But I would wake up in the morning and then I'd look outside and say, it's snowing! <laughs> and the kids, when they were younger, they would run and look and go, and I'd say, April Fools. <laughs> well, after a few years of doing this, they kind of got wise about the whole thing and it wasn't so successful after all. They would say, yeah, uh-huh, we know, we know. 
Some April Fool's jokes have been successful and others just bomb entirely, like the one with my family. But this evening, I'm not going to be playing an April Fool's joke on you. I'm going to tell you about why Monday Thursday is so important. No fool. So why is Monday Thursday? the Thursday prior to Easter Sunday, the day before Good Friday, so important. Because of Monday, Thursday, we are encouraged to serve others. On the first Monday, Thursday, Jesus gave us an extreme example of serving others. On this night so many years ago, Jesus took off his robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel that was tied around him. Just imagine the surprise on the disciples' faces when Jesus himself knelt down as a lowly servant and washed their feet. After washing each of the disciples' feet, he returned the to returned to the table and said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Following Jesus' example, we are to serve others, putting others ahead of ourselves. Second, because of Monday, Thursday, we are told of Jesus' betrayal by Judas. Judas' betrayal of Jesus comes as a warning to all those that state they believe in Jesus. We are not to just call him Lord, Lord. As it says at the end of the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel, in chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. We are not just to do, or to, we are to do, and seek what God wants us to do. Our lives aren't about us. It's not about looking out for number one. Our lives are only fulfilled when we follow our Lord and Savior. Only when we are a true disciple. We are to have a relationship with Jesus, not just give lip service with our words, but to give with our lives. Because of Monday, Thursday, there is meaning to the Lord's Supper. Jesus eagerly desired to have his final Passover meal with his disciples. Another version of the Bible says it was with fervent desire that he had this meal. It was something of utmost importance to Jesus. The meal culminated in the Lord's Supper, one of the two sacraments of our church, the other being baptism. The bread and the cup symbolize what Jesus did for us, his body broken for us, and his blood shed for us. When we eat the bread and drink the cup, we do so just as the first disciples, as well as everyone that has taken the elements over the past 2,000 years have done. It is a special gift from God, and we are to celebrate this sacrament seriously. Like the disciples on the Emmaus road that broke bread with Christ the evening of his resurrection, we also break bread and share the cup with our risen Lord. We ask him to be present with us at this meal. We will observe the sacrament in remembrance of him in a few moments. Because of Monday, Thursday, we find encouragement in difficult times. 
after the meal. Jesus, as recorded in John chapter 17, prayed what is known as his high priestly prayer. I encourage you to read. In this prayer, Jesus first prayed for himself. He prayed for strength to endure what he was going to go through. In the second part of his prayer, he prayed for his disciples, for strength, that they would have strength in difficult times. And finally, he prayed for us in the last part of his prayer. In his prayer, he prayed for all those that would believe in him, that we would be united as one. We are the body of Christ. I find it amazing that Jesus' prayer is recorded for us to read. It was out of his love for us that Monday, Thursday is so important for all Christians in the difficult times in our lives. Remembering that Jesus prayed for us gives us great encouragement. We know that God is with us throughout the difficult times. No fool. Because of Monday, Thursday, we read that Jesus was arrested again for us. After Jesus had prayed to his father, it was time for Judas to do what he was destined to do. With a detachment of soldiers as well as with police and from the chief priests, he met Jesus and his disciples in the garden of Gethsemane. After a brief conversation, Jesus was arrested and taken to be interrogated by several authorities and eventually condemned to be crucified on a cross. My friend, Monday Thursday is no April Fool's joke. It is not something that people made up. Millions of people's lives have been changed because of what occurred on Monday, Thursday, and the rest of Holy Week, including tomorrow, Good Friday, and Sunday, Resurrection of the Lord Sunday. The crucifixion and resurrection are documented events by eyewitnesses in the New Testament accounts. There are literally hundreds of people that saw him after his resurrection that interacted with him, spoke with him, ate with him. These hundreds of people were not fooled. I'm telling you the, the truth. There is no fooling that Jesus came to the earth for us. The New Testament testifies to it, and so has the lives of untold number of Christians throughout the ages. So when we leave this evening, may we go and spread the good news. The good news that there is no fooling that Monday, Thursday, and the days following, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday, Resurrection of the Lord Sunday, are real. No fooling. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. We thank you for this day. All the events of this day that you did for us. We ask you, Lord, to guide us now as we come to the Lord's table. Be with us. Help us, Lord, to spread that wonderful good news. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I ask you to remain seated as we prepare ourselves to receive this wonderful sacrament that we call the Lord's Supper. Let us hum the, the special communion song for this evening in remembrance.
disciples. And tonight Jesus reveals himself to us. He is the master teacher who unexpectedly washes our feet. As what a servant. He has led us triumphantly into Jerusalem, and yet he speaks of going where we cannot go, of being broken and poured out for us. We remember him now as he asks us to do in this communal meal. Whether bewildered that he must depart, sobered before the cross that he waits, or quietly anticipating Sunday's joy, let us center ourselves now in this moment connected with those around us to see God's presence in the breaking of the bread and the pouring of the cup. Let us pray. As Jesus gave thanks to God, we also give thanks for this new covenant. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, may we remember the Lord Jesus. Let us remember and be thankful. Let us remember until he comes again. Let us remember all he has done for us. Lord Jesus, remember us when you come. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, as we have heard in the Gospel lesson and in Pastor Lee's sermon, we know the story of that Monday Thursday, of that night, before Jesus was arrested and betrayed, taken to trial and crucified. The scripture tells us that on the night of his arrest, Jesus was at table with his beloved disciples with whom he longed to share the Passover meal. After they had finished the supper, Jesus took the bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup and poured the wine. And after he sat, said, This is the cup of the new covenant. This is the cup in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and drink the cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. As the Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, took bread, I take these elements of bread and wine to be set apart from all common use to this holy use and mystery. And as he gave thanks and blessed, let us draw near to God and present to him our prayers and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this bread and this cup may be for us the body and blood of our Lord and that we and all who share this feast may be one with Christ and He with us. Fill us with eternal life that with joy we may be his faithful people until we feast with him in glory. This our prayer we make in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we now have the elements in us. First, you have the bread. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was broken for us. All of you, take and eat.
Our God is not holy. But He is here. And He is with us. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. All of you, take and drink. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, let us always remember to give you thanks and praise every time we come together and share in the bread and the cup. Let us always remember the depth of your commitment to us. Let us never take for granted the price you pay so we might receive the fullness of the grace present in this meal. Amen. As the early as our early forefathers has professed their faith, let us now profess our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one word, Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the begotten of His Father, before all worlds, God of God, the light of light, very God of very God, the begotten not of me, the being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and crucified also for us at the cross of Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory. Whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the Lord of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who was called by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and Apostolic Church, and I acknowledge one of the reasons for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May I request everyone, to those who are able, to please rise. For our faith, what wondrous love is this.
My dear brothers and sisters, we have heard the word of God. We have seen how Jesus has sacrificed for us. His humbleness is indeed shown for us to be followed. And His service is indeed also shown for us not only to remember, but also to give praise and glory to God. And so tonight, as we go out of this sanctuary, remember Jesus has given his service, his love, and his sacrifice for all of us to be saved and to have life and life eternal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good evening to all. God bless.